Okay, we're now in a windy and cold New Orleans in the Upper Ninth Ward to meet with Tamika Norris. She actually started out wanting to be a rapper, but now she makes art in a variety of media, including performance, video, film, painting, and installation. She often uses her own body in her work, and previous performances and videos have seen her reenact works like Michelangelo Pistoletto's sculpture, Venus of the Rags, and Marina Abramovich's Art Must Be Beautiful, Artist Must Be Beautiful. Most recently, Tamika has produced a film and installation that's a part of the process Prospect 3 citywide art exhibition. It's titled Mika Jean, How She Got Good, and in it we see Tamika play the protagonist as she struggles to understand herself and how she relates to this city. Tamika thinks a lot about how we construct our own identity in relation to where we live and how we present ourselves to that world. So let's go talk to her and see what she's got for us. Hi, I'm Tamika Norris, and this is your art assignment. I mean, even as a kid, I think I thought I was an artist, but that meant like singing in my brush. <laughs> I don't know. It just meant just, you know, dressing up in clothes. Um, but I think I've redefined who I am as an artist over time. Mika Jean is a combination of Tamika Janine, so my first and middle name. And my babysitter, you know, would. Be like, Mika Jean, like, where are you? Or like my family, you know, calls me Mika, Mika Jean. She is basically that three-year-old girl, that four-year-old girl singing in the brush. Um, sort of no, no limits, not yet self-aware about gender, race, identity, just sort of open. Having Mika Jean, which is not someone from the future or someone who I'm making up the rules for. I'm actually going back and looking at my life, looking at my childhood, and really just wanting to honor that playfulness. Your assignment is to become someone else. So first, before you do anything, take a selfie, then get one transitional item, make a mustache, lipstick, a tie, whatever it is, a wig, then go out into the world, check your mail, go get a coffee, go take a ride in your car. And in the process, take another selfie and that's it. There was another thing Tamika wanted to emphasize and that's to be sure you aren't becoming someone you know. Yeah, that's really important because uh, I think it's okay to be inspired by someone you know for this assignment, but it's more interesting if you're becoming a different version of yourself than if you're imitating a friend or a celebrity. And there are so many great precedents for this art assignment. I can think of a ton of artists who've taken on alter egos. There's Marcel Duchamp's Rose Salavi or Andy Warhol. But the animation, I'm guessing, is going to be about the great Cindy Sherman. I mean, Cindy Sherman is fantastic and she's great for this assignment because she's become loads of other people in her work. Yeah, that's true, but what Cindy Sherman does is really directed toward the camera and I think the part of this assignment that I find the most interesting is that you have to go out into the world as somebody else and that makes me think of a different artist. So I'm wrong? You're wrong. <laughs> In 1973, Adrian Piper was studying philosophy at Harvard and began a series of performances in response to the political climate of the time. Donning sunglasses, a wig, and a mustache, Piper transformed herself into a male alter ego she called the Mythic Being. The Mythic Being first appeared in ads placed in the Village Voice, in which she combined a photo of the character with text culled from her own journals. The Being also did a variety of private and public performances, hanging around the house, doing yoga, and venturing out on the street to explore her own reaction and those of others to her acts of aggression and stereotypical masculinity. She documented these performances and made drawings based on the photos, creating works that sprang from her belief that you could be transformed by the immediate experience of becoming or encountering the mythic being. Mythic because its gender, race, and status were unstable and unclear. Tamika's assignment asks you to become your own mythic being, informed by your own time and place, influences, stereotypes, fears, and ambitions. One of the easiest sort of symbolic ways of transitioning is in physical appearance. And that small gesture, I think, can always incite some sort of an internal shift. Um, when I put on red lipstick, which I'm very uncomfortable doing, I feel like, ooh, I've become something, or, or, or the expectation, because I have on now red lipstick, does something or what if a guy puts on a tie and he rarely wears a tie you know who do you become 
how do you perform this, this symbol? I was visiting some friends and they're transgender and um, they just thought it would be fun and funny to um, go out in the world. Uh, and I think we were, we, we were going grocery shopping. So um, simple transition. They bound my chest and they took a little snippet of my hair and we glued it along my mouth and made a mustache. And really, I had on the same clothes that I would have, that, that I was wearing, jeans and a, and a flannel top. And that was it. I was very aware of, well, shoot, do I walk differently? Like, do I talk differently? Do I use my own voice? What, what do I do? And it was, and I tried it all while I was out. How do you perform your new self that you're becoming? And I found that to be really interesting. What parts do you keep? What parts do you push away? And, and we, just, we, we just played with that idea. I think I'm quite an attractive man, actually.